patients that I have in the clinic nowadays would uh, describe their principals as intimidating in elementary school, but I would have to say that, as you can tell from the warm and soft-spoken voice of Tom Mellish, I didn't have a lot of anxiety growing up in Sugar Creek. <laughs> Before I say anything, I do want to be clear that the Lilly Scholarship and any of the accolades that Tom rattled off there uh, are a direct, direct reflection of my parents who are here today, uh, Jerry and Kathy Hole. I was asked to speak today about how the Lilly Endowment Scholarship changed the course of my career. Uh, but the truth is that it's changed a whole heck of a lot more than that. Uh, in 2005, I had my heart broken for the very first time by this issue that has since become so very central to my life, so very central to the man I hope I'm becoming to uh, the impact I crave for the world, this issue of child poverty. And I was in Ecuador after my first year at Butler, and I was with an organization based out of Indianapolis, and we were seeing patients down there. And this little boy, I'd say 11 or 12 years old, uh, came in in tattered clothes and dusty hair and tired eyes, carrying his three-year-old little sister. And he made quite the trek to get to us that day down a mountainside in a pretty rough terrain. And he got to me, who at the time was a freshman, and he just laid her in my lap, and her body just wilted there. She was limp. And the doctors I was with and came in, they rushed her away to the back. They discovered she had an overwhelming infection, and ultimately, in a few hours, they saved that little girl's life. But it wasn't the saving of that little girl, or the fact that that organization had taken modern medicine to the fringes and shadows of our world that really inspired me, that really changed me. It was the little boy. This little boy who uh, had his own hopes and dreams for the world, who out of love, out of very pure love, trekked down a mountainside carrying even little a girl. Uh, because in his life, because where he was born, he was afforded no other choice. And to this day, the contrast between that boy's community and mine the difference between the support my hometown offered me for the Lilly Endowment Scholarship and multiple other types of support it made all the difference because it broke my heart. And I've spent the last decade, I guess, trying to pick up the pieces of that heart and trying to build them into things that had potential to have impact on the world. Something meaningful like skill sets or organizations or networks that God willing would make the, little, the, world, the world a little more just for kids like him. And I still think about that little boy today, and the ironic thing about his story, about his trek down that mountainside, about his mission to save the life of a very sick and a very poor little girl, was that's the very same mission I have today, trying to make the lives of children who are very sick and very poor a little better. And I guess the message that I want all of you here to, today to hear the most is that my privilege to pursue and live out that mission in my life is a direct reflection of your support in 2004. I can't thank you enough for that. Uh, Mom and Dad and I were on spring break down in Florida when we heard that I was going to be a Lilly Scholar. I don't know if you had a similar experience, Aaron. Uh, now, for those of you who don't know my parents, they're, they're right here. They're a very athletic couple. Uh, <laughs> incredible, gold-worthy vertical leaps. Uh, and. My dad tells the story of them jumping up and down on the bed, and I can't <coughs> confirm or deny this, but I will tell you that it makes me a little worried about their safety thinking about it. <laughs> and I was thinking about that moment as I was trying to put together some th thoughts about what to say to all of you today. Uh, and I realized that I would be hard-pressed to name too many other instances in, in our lives where I've seen them more grateful, because it was an entire community coming behind me, uh, something that they value very much. And we still very much value very much. The word meant a whole lot to us, not just the financial part, which I think in and of itself was enormous. It meant that I could travel to Ecuador and places like that to find this passion for my life. Uh, it meant that I could pursue graduate education so that I could have an impact here in the United States. But more importantly, it, for us at least, I think it meant that my mom and dad's message to me, their very consistent message to me from the time I was a little boy, 
that I could and should pursue my dreams with all my heart. It meant that that message was true. And there's something very special about growing up, especially in a place like Montgomery County, and realizing that the message that your parents had for you since you were that little kid, I don't know who got those pictures. <laughs> <laughs> realizing that that message was true is very special. So as you heard, I, uh, I chose Butler after North Montgomery, which second to Montgomery County only is my home. I don't know that I've ever felt more alive or more inspired in a place than there. Uh, I went to Harvard after, Stanford afterwards and Harvard after that. Uh, and Kelly asked me to say a few words about those places in my education there. I'll just tell you that at their very best, at their very best, uh, it meant things like mentors like Connie Rice uh, and classes with former U.S. presidents and uh, five-star generals and CEOs. We had a couple lectures by Oprah Winfrey, which were, which were fun. Uh, it meant that I had some really well-connected mentors who could help me start some of these businesses. It's a total lie if you think that I did that any of that on my own. Um, and then hospital rounds with Nobel laureates, and my personal favorite, a round of golf at Pebble Beach with my dad when I graduated from Stanford. It's a lot of fun. Uh, but at their worst, the very worst, these places meant several hours away by plane from this place. And it meant panic when my grandma got sick and I was several states away. And it meant missing the friendliness in Indiana, and it meant, meant being a small fish in a big pond, it meant sometimes, on the worst of these telling some of these very sick families who had traveled from all over the world to Harvard to my team for their hail Mary treatment that we didn't have anything left to offer them. And those were pretty hard days. And I guess I just tell you these things because I want to make one thing very clear today, and that is that as wonderful as Butler and Stanford and Harvard were, they were, they were never home. And they never will be home because this is home. Uh, and right here is, is where I want to end up eventually. And there's a man here today named Phil Campbell in that bright orange shirt. He was my fifth grade teacher and basketball coach. And Phil taught me some lessons that Connie Rice never did. <laughs> and I'm serious about this. Lessons more practical in my life than anything I learned in California or in Boston. I learned uh, about teamwork on his team. I learned about the importance of firm handshakes even when you lose to Pleasant Hill or Sommer. <laughs> he taught me that cutting in line is never okay even if you really got to pee. <laughs> even if there's only one chocolate milk left and you want to get it, you still can't do it. Um, he taught me that being creative could lead to innovation. And he taught me that learning something new every day matters. And I, I call out him uh, in particular today, but the truth is that there are are so many examples of that. Just in this room, I see a lot of familiar faces of people that have meant something to me along the way. And I really do believe that I've been raised by an entire community and not just these two wonderful people. Growing up in Montgomery County helped me understand that none of these jobs I ever had would be as hard as a farmer's. That sometimes you got to take care of yourself, too, especially if it means a trip to Dairylicious. <laughs> yep. It also taught me that uh, if you're in Trivia Night in San Francisco and they ask about the author of Ben-Hur, that it's a real showstopper. <laughs> <laughs> and very seriously, it, it taught me that communities like ours are built to stand together. And they're built to pick each other up and support and believe and love one another, especially when another teen suicide rocks our understanding of the world here in Montgomery County, or when heroes like my Uncle Gary, or Dr. Mike Blood leave us too soon, or uh, when the economy struggles a few years back and we're all worried about what comes next. I guess growing up here in the Lilly Scholarship and the opportunities that spiraled out of that have taught me you know, two main things. Number one, you change the way that I see the problem that gets me out of bed in the morning. I used to see human suffering as the systemic problem of the body, which is what I was taught. Uh, but because of the scholarship and the opportunities that you gave me to serve abroad and to serve in some of the poorest communities here in the United States. I now see suffering in so many of my patients not as systemic problems of their bodies, but as systemic problems of their country and of our broken world and of this relentless injustice of poverty that exists. Today, because I'm not able to compare my upbringing here to the upbringing of too many children in the United States, I realize that it's the upstream issues of how we structure our communities, how we educate our children, how we think about crime in prison and how we prioritize parts of our national budget that trickle down the mountainsides to the bedside where I see these children suffering 
not because their bodies are failing, but because we are. And that's the reality, that's the truth, that's the core of who I am that gets me out of bed in the morning. And that is a gift from the Montgomery County Community Foundation and at times a very overwhelming burden, but something that I'm very grateful for, especially for people like you who proudly allow its impact to grow deeper and deeper. Secondly, to change how I view myself. When I was little, I used to tell people, and Mom and Dad can attest to this, that I wanted to be the guy in the back of the trash truck, because I thought that would be kind of fun. Uh, but at some point, I started telling people, I'm not exactly sure when, maybe it was my interview, my grant here right there. I started telling people I wanted to be a doctor, because it sounded a little better. Uh, and then it grew into something that was very truthful, which is that I want to be a doctor for poor kids, that I want to be an entrepreneur to start things, organizations and policies that help make the lives of poor kids a little better. And, there's, and that's, in no uncertain terms, become my identity, uh, which means that it affects where I want to live someday, it affects the spouse I will choose, it affects the kind of jobs I look for, it's changed how I think about politics, how I will raise my own children, how I will spend and give my own money. It's strengthened my faith in God and my faith in humanity. And so this identity that was shaped back in Ecuador because I was able to spend a little more money during college uh, changed every decision I made. And so yes, Kelly, the Lily Endowment changed the course of my career, uh, but it's also changed my entire life. So let me end with this. There are 16 million children in America growing up poor. That's one out of every five children in the United States who faces worse health and worse education and worse jobs because they're growing up in families below the federal income level. What kind of people do we want to be? What kind of citizens? What kind of Americans do we want to be? And what do we want our children to be? Are we okay with our American family neglecting every fifth child? Think about that. Lucas Oil Stadium seats about 67,000 people. If we built a place five times bigger, it still wouldn't hold all the Hoosier children living in poverty. And that's not okay with me. And so if we truly care about the future of this community, of our state, of the country, then we've got to start caring more about the people who will be living in that future. And I think that's something that you all here do very, very well. And so I guess that let me offer not just my sincerest thank you, for how you've changed my life, but also my deepest encouragement that the work you do matters not just for families like ours, for students like me, uh, but for the innocent and the condemned and the sick and the weak. People you've taught students like me and Aaron, I hope, and countless others to go forward and serve. That will be the legacy of the Montgomery County Community Foundation. I'm very proud to call this place home because of people and work like you do. Thank you very much.